What is up guys? Welcome back to another video today. My name is Blind Sandwich. Most of you who are watching this, if anyone, um, have probably never seen a video on my channel before. Because I've never done a video like this on my channel before. So, uh, all you metal fans, you're welcome to my channel. Um, probably going to be doing some more of this. Uh, the ranked stuff. Um, today I'm going to be ranking all 10 of Children of Bodom's, uh, studio albums, all 10 of them. So I'm going to be ranking these from, I don't want to say worst to best, but like not as good to best in my opinion, because, um, uh, honestly I can sit through every studio album. Uh, Children of Bodom is a very special band for me. Because uh, back when I was kind of just, oh god, when was this? Maybe about two years ago. Maybe a year or two ago. I don't remember. But uh, my music taste was like, the hardest it would get was like Avenged Sevenfold uh, type of stuff. Maybe Disturbed, you know, stuff like that. And I wanted to get into like true heavy metal. And at the time, I was very, uh, very, uh what's the what's the phrase here i was very into music but uh i didn't know there were like sub genres to the metal genre um and i quickly learned that i was watching this video from a twitch streamer jason paradise of his like three hour endurance challenge and the, one of the bands that, like, I because I, the reason I watched that video again is like, okay, I want to find some, like, really heavy metal bands to listen to, and he had them all, like, subtitled when he played this, so I was like, okay, Children of Bodom. That was the first one I checked out. The first album I heard by Children of Bodom was Hate Crew Death Roll, and I loved it, and then I listened to Follow the Reaper. So, um, I've listened to every single one of their studio albums more than once, and I believe I've come to a verdict here, but... Um, of course it's going to change over time because music preferences change. This is just what I believe right now. Their album's ranked from worst to best. So coming in at the number 10 spot, um, but, but real quick, real quick, I'm sorry. Uh, basically Children of Bodom was, you know, the reason I got into melodic death metal and branched out my metal subgenres so much. Like I listen to, I barely listen to any hard rock anymore, basically. I love heavy metal, and, uh, you know, the subgenres that come along with it, you know, funeral, doom metal, groove metal, like, Lamb of God, shit like that. <coughs> um, sorry, I'm a little sick right now. And, uh, you know, even folk metal, like, Agalog stuff. So, uh, let's just jump right into this. It's been a three-minute intro, way too fucking long, but I hope you metal fans are here for the long run. All right, so I, uh... I actually changed my mind right before I started filming this. Uh, or no, right after I started filming this. So I have now replaced the 10th album with the 9th album. Coming in in number 10 for me is actually Are You Dead Yet? Their 2005 album, I believe. And I, it just, it was weird to me. You know, I listened to this and I was like, this doesn't sound like typical children of Bodom. And, uh... It's still a good record. Like, uh, there is not a single bad album by Children of Bodom, in my humble opinion. But, um, <clears throat> the album art is kind of off-putting. You know, you don't... I can't tell if the Reaper is there or not. Because it's so pixelated. But, yeah, it's nothing like their colorful album covers the previous four albums. God, man, they really put out good quality material. Um, but yeah, no, coming to number 10 is Are You Dead Yet? It loses some of its melodic feel. Uh, Children of Bodom's Are You Dead Yet? doesn't have too much melody in it. It's more of a, uh, heavy groove album. You know, like, I can listen to it. And, uh, I enjoy it. You know, if it's something I want a little bit more heavy from Children of Bodom, then I'll listen to that. Uh... Coming in number nine is I Worship Chaos, their 2015 album. 
Now, the reason I changed this to number nine instead of number ten is because I, you know, I uh, took into account how much work they put into this because they made a DVD for it. Granted, it was only 16 minutes long, but they still put out a DVD for this, as you can see here. Um, this is a good album. Now, it's not something I would willingly just say, oh, let's listen to I Worship Chaos. No, I would go to one of their earlier albums first, but this isn't a bad album. I give them props because they, they always said they would never make an album art with yellow, and they pulled it off really good here. Uh, of course, there's Roy on the front. Uh, Roy is the Reaper, by the way. <coughs> so, yeah. I mean, and another thing, you can tell there's only four members here. I, th I believe Typical Bodum had uh, five members, and their guitarist, it didn't work out with them. Their secondary guitarist, obviously, Alexi, um, was their main vocalist, guitarist. Uh, he actually had to write uh, most, if not, I think, all of this album, all of the guitar work. So, you know, props to him for cranking that out. Like, he was there at the studio a lot. Um, and this was their second-to-last album, and it's not bad, but it's not the first one I would go to. Um, still a pretty good album. All right, let's move on to the number eight place. And, you know, it's so weird putting um, some of these in such a low rank because I love all of this band's work. So when you have to put one album before the other, when you say, like, oh, the 10th album, Are You Dead Yet? It's like, Are You Dead Yet is still a good album. But you feel bad for placing it so low because it's still so good, but it's not as good as the rest of the stuff. But you still like it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, again, with this one, my eighth place, uh, Blood Drunk, their 2008 album, it's still good. It's just not as good as their other stuff. Um, the first two tracks are pretty cool. Other ones that are pretty cool, uh, Smile Pretty for the Devil. Obviously, uh, the first two tracks are always amazing. Uh, Hellhounds on My Trail, Blood Drunk, uh, and what else was? Band from Heaven. Those are all kick-ass tracks. Um, yeah, really good. I like this album a lot. And the album art is pretty kick-ass. Obviously, you can still see Roy in there. He's doing his thing. Um, yeah, not a bad album. Uh, like I said, I love the album art. It's kind of goes back to their typical stuff, but still not my favorite. Okay, now this is where... I get a lot of hate, and where Children of Bodom also gets a lot of hate. Relentless, re Relentless, Reckless, Forever, I believe was their 2011 album, I want to say. Does it say on here? Yes, 2011. Everyone hates this album with a burning passion. And I'm just now realizing I should probably turn on my light for better lighting, but I don't know where the actual... Where's the switch? There it is. A wreck. There we go, that's better. Why didn't you do that at the beginning of the video, you stupid fuck? Sorry. <coughs> Everyone rips on this album for being ugly. And at first, I thought it was kind of ugly, too. But the more I listened to it, the more I liked it. And uh, first time I listened to it, I was like, okay, this is a pretty good album. Second time I listened to it, I was like, okay, this isn't as good as I thought it was. Uh, they made a DVD for this one. Again, putting in a lot of work. Uh, it's not as bad as the other ones I listed. I actually prefer this one over uh, I Worship Chaos, Blood Drunk, and... Uh, are you dead yet? Now, people put this in tent all the time, and I just don't get it. You know, like, if you listen to it more, you might like it. The first three songs are really, really good, and then uh, it all sounds more of the same after it, but uh, also Pussyfoot Miss Suicide, that's a really good song. So the first four, honestly, this whole album's pretty good, but um, 
it's just not as good as some of their other stuff. Now, once we get into, like, the top six slash five, things are going to get better here. But I love Not My Funeral, the opening track. So good. So good. And uh, I will blast that song any day of the week. I never get sick of that song. Um, and, you know, one of my it's one of my favorites by Children of Bodom. And I don't even know why. I think I do know why. I don't know. Kind of just babbling here. I'm sorry. But I don't know. I, I really don't know why, actually. But, yeah, you know, people are like, okay, give me a good opening Bodum song. I either say uh, this. I either say, uh, get, you know, listen to Not My Funeral. Because it's not super in your face. And it kind of warms you up to Children of Bodum. So yeah, Re Relentless, Reckless, Forever. It's a good album. I would recommend you listen. All right, coming in number six, I believe. What's it? Yes, six. Uh, their 2011, 2013 album, Halo of Blood. Now, uh, I will say, Relentless, Reckless, Left, Left. Why did they choose a weird ass fucking name for that album? That's another reason I put it in seventh. Relentless, Reckless, Forever. It's not their best work. So, um, this was kind of their relapse into amazing work, I guess. Uh, Halo of Blood is a great album. Um, I love this album a lot. Every song sounds pretty good, but I remember getting annoyed with each song, like, right before it was over. So they kind of capped it off at a really good spot. I don't know why. I like this album. The album art's, you know, a little different. It's cool that they did a white theme. You know, they were trying to probably trying to explore every color possible, except for yellow, which they did in their next album. Um, but yeah, it was a good album coming back from their, you know, three year streak of or three album streak of uh, Are You Dead Yet, uh, Blood Drunk, and then Relentless, Reckless, Forever. Halo of Blood was a good, you know jump back into their uh typical better work that people like to comment on um but yeah everyone feels like they kind of went on a 10-year hiatus where things wasn't as things weren't as great as they were before uh now coming in okay now weird thing here coming in at number five is actually what used to be my favorite children of Bodom album before i listened to some of their earlier work uh, coming in at number five is their 2019 album, Hexed, which was actually their last album. Um, and it's it's sad because you, I always think about Alexi here. Uh, I don't know if he truly wanted to die or not, but... Um, this was their last album before he passed. And, uh, it's cool. This album is cool because you see every style of Bodum here. You see the early work, uh, with the keyboards. You see the uh, central work with the heavy riffs and then, like, in-your-face type of, uh, you know, traditional metal tracks. And you also see, like, their comeback, where their sound was a little bit different, like with Halo of Blood. And it's cool, because you just see this album comprised of so many different Children of Bodom elements, and it's their last one. It's the one that they capped it all off with. And I wonder if they did that on purpose, because the style of this record completes all of their styles they had in their long-ass run. And I wonder if that's why they made it like this. Uh, album art's kind of cool. It's different, but it's still cool. All right, I gotta wrap this video up because I'm getting tired. Coming in number four is the first Children of Bodom album I ever listened to, and I loved it. Hate Crew Death Roll. Their 2005 album. No, 2003. What am I saying? The weird thing about this album is that it was kind of like their transition period. Um... They switched it up a little bit from their previous album, Follow the Reaper. They made this one a little bit more 
heavy. This was kind of more like a, th not thrash, what am I saying? Maybe thrash? I don't know. Um, this was just heavier and a little bit less melodic. A little bit, like I said, a little bit. There are some solos in this album that are absolutely fucking insane. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's different from their first three. But, um, it's still really good. And I love it. Hate Crew Death Roll always will hold a special place in my heart because I can listen to this album for days and never get sick of it. And it was, like I said, the first one I ever listened to by Children of Bodom. So, very, very nice album. Now, this is where I'm also going to get a lot of hate again. Um, This actually recently changed. Uh, This album I had in my second place spot, but it is now in my third place spot. Now, for most Children of Bodom fans, this is their favorite album. 2000's Follow the Reaper. Obviously, if I didn't like it, it would be in, like, 8th place. Or ninth or 10th. But, I love this album. It was the second one I ever listened to by them. And I always found it really good. Really, really, really good. Love the color scheme. It's so fucking good. This album is absolutely crazy and gorgeous and melodic you know and, and it's just really really good i love this album with everything <laughs> that i love for music so um children of bodom follow the reaper is going number three because uh, which obviously if you guys know what these albums are you'll know that there are two left that and you know what these are the first two albums um but yes, I love this album a lot. So please don't think I put it in number three because I don't like it. I love it. <clears throat> this was a hard, hard choice because these two albums right here, these two albums right here, Hate Breeder and Something Wild, their first two albums, I, I honestly sat there and looked at them for about 10 minutes and had to decide... Which one was better? And it was so hard. Now, coming in number two is something wild. This one is very unique uh, from all their other work. It was their beginning. <clears throat> I believe the lead singer was like 17 when this came out. And the album art is really dark and I like it and it's you know I don't know it's just different a uh, lot of more um what am I trying to say here the keyboard work was a lot different than it was in their other albums you got a lot more of it in this um and I absolutely love this album you know it, it's their starting point it was really really good perfect length just like the rest of their albums and just you know, even though it's a little bit sloppy, the execution in this is just so good. And it was an amazing first album. Typically, you don't see albums this good for a band's first um, first record. Or their first record is their best, which is almost this case. Now, coming in last, well, first place, but the last one is their second studio album, 1999's Hate Breeder. I love this album from the album art to the last second of the album. Uh, I don't know. There's just something about this. I, it's their profound... What? Hate Breeder for me is kind of like they're finding their sound. And to me, I think it was their best sound. Uh, along with Something Wild, this is their best sound. And then... Follow the Reaper comes very shortly after. I feel like this was like the pre-Follow the Reaper. It was a little bit... I don't want to say it's raw, because it's not. Like, the solos, the riffs, all of it. That's This is why it's my favorite album, is because just everything in it was probably their best-sounding work. Uh, the melodies were absolutely insane. It's all heavy. And it's easy listening.
So that's my honest ranking. I hope you guys did enjoy. Hope you don't hate on me too much. Your ranking is different, but I'm going to talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.